I used to watch these these people come in this house, these rich people with all diamonds on, and it used to it used to fucking hurt me in my chest. I used to sit there and I go, I know I'm gonna get that. This is all coming to me, yeah. But am I, am I getting it sitting here? How the fuck is this gonna work? And I drove myself mad for years about it. And I was innocent in them situations. And just because people had fabricated stories about me on the show and all that, I come out looking guilty. I had never had a pot to piss in. I couldn't pay my gym memberships. I was on the show giving it a big one to people and I must have looked like a rich geezer. I did not have a fucking pan. I weren't paying rent at home, yeah? Sometimes didn't have a petrol to put in my car to get to filming. Georgia had to drive me a few times to work because I never had the money to get there. That's the reality of it. And I never told anyone this, yeah? I was driving home. I was so upset, yeah? I was driving like an AMG at the time that I'd borrowed. I nearly drove it into the back of a lorry. I weren't made for it. And I sat there one day and I went to my dad, all right, fuck this dad, yeah? My car's £150 a month. I can't afford it this month. What am I gonna do? He said, why don't you start by selling that 10 grand AP you got on your wrist? And it just clicked, man. It was the best move I'd made in my life, being that kid. It changed my life completely. The fucking best day of my life meeting this kid. I'm gonna put this out there. I believe you'll take this company to be a billion dollar company or more. And do you I'm know what? I, I, I ain't gonna disagree with you. Do you know I what think I mean? it scares me. It scares me where I can take it. Yeah. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna put myself on a small wage and I'm gonna make this thing fucking huge. And ever since that day on, mate, I'm telling you I have the time of my life again. Boom, we're on. Let's do it. Today's guest, we've got Tommy Mallet. How are you, brother? Very well, mate. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. From reality star to having Mallet footwear, it's everywhere, brother. Yeah. In Glasgow, every shop, I'm starting to think I'm going to start seeing it in fucking fruit shops and <laughs> everywhere. It is everywhere. So, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. You've done amazing. Proud of you. How's life been? Excellent. Is it? Excellent. I've had a... Um... I've had a long three months of sitting back and reflecting on my busy schedule that I've had for the last five, six years and just literally took a lot of stuff into, into consideration. So I'm feeling fresh. I feel, I feel brand new at the minute. Mm -hmm. feel good. Because I've watched a lot of your story as well from dyslexics when you were young. Yeah. Can't do your times table to now running a massive, I massive company. still can't company. do it. Yeah, you don't need to I do still it. still can't yeah. do it. Yeah. But that shows you don't need that shit. Don't need none of you it, mate, I mean? to be fair. Yeah, no, do you know what it is? It's like, I can't, I, I struggle with everything when it comes to reading, writing. It, anything I'm not interested in, I can't do. So like, if you put me a document down there to sign, I won't be able to do it. Yeah. But I've learned, I've learned, I've learned over time. I can employ someone to come do that for me. So I'll just text someone, they'll come up now and read the document, yeah. and I'll just sign it. Yeah. So, so yeah. I thought I was doing that when I hired Nick, mate, but with his the absolute name. Fucking hell, I laugh, in you? <laughs> him. I've got no chance, mate. Like, he'll read it, he'll read it backwards, shot. <laughs> Losing money, <laughs> <laughs> He can't hear us, he's yeah. asleep. <laughs> uh, I always go back to the start with my guest, brother. Yep. Where you grew up and how it all began. Yep. So I grew up in a place called Island in North London. Um, with my mum, my dad, my brother. Um, that's where it all began, man. Yeah, I just met your old boy. Yeah, that's Some my dad man. there, yeah. He just, listen, he's living the life. He just rolls around and yeah. chats everyone. He actually wanted to come in and sit down. That's mm -hmm. what he didn't do. He wanted to watch. Yeah, yeah. like he didn't know what he was doing. He yeah. knew what was going on. <laughs> but yeah, no, I grew up, I grew up in Island and North London. Um, spent most of my life there through um, primary into secondary school and then got moved to Essex around the age of 14. Started school there, and it all went from there. Who so was your schooling? Uh, tough, tough. I went to um, where I'm from originally is quite a rough area. Most of it's council. So, as much as um, I feel like I was probably one of the most pri privileged kids out of anyone in the school. My dad had quite a successful job, um, but it was still, I still come from quite a rough area. Mm. So. It ain't just like going to school where I where I started at. It's, it was like it was a quite a lot. Of, it, it was it, it was a lot, especially secondary school. Yeah, like you'd worry a lot about on the like going home. Are you gonna bump into on the bus on the way back? Because some of the things that like I see was crazy. A lot of bullying back then. Um, not so much bullying, more so much a lot of kids being involved in gangs and rival gangs getting onto the bus. I'm talking about the age of. 
13, 12 mm. to 13, people see us gas in the bus and things like that. But for me, I had an older brother who's three years older than me. So I, I had quite an easy school life up until the age of 13, 14, when I got shipped out to Essex. Uh, when, I got, when I got shipped out to Essex, that's when it was tough. And a lot, I feel like I lost two years of school from being shipped out because I was so different. Mm -hmm. I'd come from somewhere in, somewhere in London to Essex where no one understood me when I started. I spoke different, I dressed different. It was crazy. And um, that was hard, that was, that was tough. And I don't think that helped my ed education because not only had I moved area and school, I then had to fit in. And I was so different. They had never met anyone like me before. Because I was a, North, a kid from North London and these were young kids from Essex. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was tough. I feel like it took me a very long time to adapt and get used to it and, and try and be accepted. So every single day after school, I'd dread the way home because I know walking home, I'd have to have a fight. Or I'd be, there'd be kids waiting outside the front because some, someone's little brother had said something to me and I told him to fuck off and then their big brother had come down. So yeah, it was tough moving to Essex, but it was the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, changed your life? Changed my life because um, my mum and dad do everything for me and my brother. So like, there's a lot of, a lot of press going around saying like, when I was younger, I got bullied for my shoes not being nice and all that stuff. That's all a load of shit. I come from... The area I come from, there's a lot of poverty. My mum had worked two jobs and my dad worked his bollocks off. I hardly see him. They went without to give to me and my brother. So like, I feel like we had a lot for, we got what we could. Mm -hmm. And they moved us to Essex because they had to, because we got to the age then where we were starting to get into trouble. And if they didn't, it could have been, it could have been a different situation to where yeah. we are now. My brother's really successful. Um, done university seven years in university and things like that and at the age of 14 15 it was just it was carnage where we come from yeah. it was just up to no good like proper city council kids yeah. but your mum and dad made the sacrifice to make the leap yeah they took the sacrifice to make the leap and move us and uh, got rid of the house and moved us there and at the time it feels like was it scary did you hate them for that I think my brother did a bit more because he was older than me. But yeah. my dad used to say that if, if you either come, you either move and we can take you away from this stuff or you're going to end up in prison mm -hmm. because there was nothing to do. So everyone would be on mopeds or running yeah. around, fighting and all that sort of stuff. I, weren't, I was a bit younger, so I wouldn't say I was really too much involved in it. But yeah, my brother resented my mum and dad a lot for moving yeah. us away from our friends. I didn't because I was still young and I went from an all boys school to boy, boy and girl school. So I was looking forward to it. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the time I was still had, I had time to meet friends yeah. around there. But yeah, from the from the age of 13 to I'd say 15, it was tough. It was tough living mm. there. I couldn't I couldn't get used to it. Yeah. I couldn't accept that like, I was from Essex until I what reckon- What was the reputation Essex had back then? Was it still the same reputation as now or was it different? Um. Certain places, what do you mean for, by reputation? Like reputation, like the boys, the girls, the nightclubs, the nightlife. Yeah, I suppose so, but not to where I moved to. Mm -hmm. I went from council to sort of council still. Yeah. So it weren't like moving to Chigwell, where the only way is yeah. Essex is formed. So I didn't live there. a lower there. class you went to? Yeah, no, it was still it was still a bit of a lower class mm -hmm. area where I lived. Not where my actual house was, but where the school was. It weren't, yeah, it weren't, it weren't like a rich Essex area yeah. where I moved to. So I went from rough to rough, basically. Yeah. So it was like, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a good childhood, but I suppose I had a lot of lessons early in life. So I went to a different school. I had trouble reading and writing as it was. And then I had to try and fit in at the same time, put both of them together. Yeah. then you're going to struggle, isn't you? Mm -hmm. So I left school with nothing. Yeah. I didn't leave with one GCSE. But it just shows you how your mum and dad made that decision at that time which must have been a tough decision for them leaving their friends maybe different jobs yeah. but look at the results now do you know what that's why my dad works me and don't have too much of a stressful life now mm -hmm. my dad sits back and does what he needs to do because if it weren't for him I would have nothing Yeah. so yeah they're, they're, they're obviously going to say it was all down to them we are where we are today <laughs> innit but yeah, it was a good that. move and me and my brother sit back now and say listen it was a good move what we done yeah. and, and we're happy that we done it but yeah it was tough it was yeah. tough to start with because you've been on the TV you've been on the scene and around everywhere 
you seem a lot older than you're only 28 28 just turned so 28 still yeah young. you're still young and for everything you've achieved now is phenomenal mm. we'll touch on your business in a bit but I'm going to put this out there. I believe you'll take this company to be a billion dollar company or more. And Do you I'm, know what? I, I, I ain't going to disagree with you. you know I mean? think it scares me. It scares me where I can take it. Yeah. My 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 ambition scares me sometimes. And I'm going to I'm going to throw that out there because I, I watched there was a man who started Nike. Yeah. I don't know if you know the story. It's fucking wicked so story. So they bought the logo for Nike. I think they got somebody to design it in the yeah. college or university. Yeah. Thirty five dollars. They started off in China, going around the track and field, selling mm -hmm. it. And you're more advanced than them than they were their first four and yeah, five years they, in they business. pioneered it now i've sort of like i've read the stories yeah. of it and like yeah. I've, I've sort of know what i'm doing with it but yeah so you've got to start somewhere and and that's a big statement but i'm going to put that out there because we've met we spoke a few times now yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and i see that mate and no, nobody else will see that go shut up you're a couple of fannies but yeah yeah yeah. that is doable for everything's limitless 100 you know what i mean so getting through that then at 16 came out of school what was your life like then um I probably ended up in the wrong place a lot of the time, which not no one knows. Do you know what? It's a funny one. This is why I wanted to do this because of people know me from the only way is Essex. As I said, I weren't. I'm not from Essex. Didn't never hang around in Essex. It, the opportunity come to me at the right time, so I done it to build my business up. But I went from job to job, man. My mum made me. My mum wanted me to follow in footsteps of my brother, so I went to um, college doing architecture. Couldn't do it because of the algebra. So I dropped out of college, lost my job. And that was at 16. So that was the first like drop I had. So first of all, I couldn't get into college because yeah. I never had the grades. Then my head teacher loved me, took me there, got me in it. I lasted two months, couldn't do it. I couldn't get my head around the, 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 ma the yeah. maths and all that. <clears throat> so done with that. Um, then I just ended up being on the road a little bit from the age of like 17 to 16 to 17. And I was getting up to no good and just like, I was look, I was doing what I could to survive sort of thing. I was hanging, hanging around with no one, everyone else that never had no jobs at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it weren't until I, was, I bumped into someone who I ain't seen in years, a guy called Billy, I hadn't seen him for about four years. I actually done my work experience with him. And he see me and he was like, what the fuck are you up to, man? Why are you not at work? And I said, I, I can't, I, I lost my job because of the algebra thing. I don't know what I'm doing. He was like, I've got some work for you. Come work with me. So at the age of like 17, I started laboring. And funny enough, I had a lot of respect for this family who took me in and I still have to this day. He was the first guy that I'd ever seen that had big money. He was the first geezer mm. I met that was a millionaire. And I looked up to him like crazy, this guy. They took me on as a laborer. And after about two weeks, that's when I realized I wanted more. So I enrolled to be a carpenter. And then I went and put myself in college and then they, they let me do an apprenticeship. But from the age of 17 to around 21, that's where my um, ambition to want it all come from. Because I was building houses for like billionaire Russians and that. And I was seeing the way they was living and what cars they was pulling up to the building site. And I used to sit outside all dirty where I'd been digging the holes and I had this, this fire inside me. I always knew I had it, but it, was take, it would take over me. If I was sitting there in my high vis, which I loved the job at the time, and I was earning decent money and I was off the streets, I used to watch these these people come in this house, these rich people with all diamonds on, and it used to it used to fucking hurt me in my chest. I used to sit there and I go, I know I'm gonna get that. This is all coming to me, yeah. But am I, am I getting it sitting here? How the fuck is this gonna work? And I drove myself mad for years about it, and I I feel like everything I've done, I rushed. Because I used to look at my future so much by seeing these rich people going, mm. that's going to be me. Look, I never listened uh, to anyone about anything. I could not be taught. So I went college doing carpentry. I've done three years in college and I passed it. I didn't do one exam. The teacher was just an absolute blinder. I spoke <laughs> around it, a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. But everything I'd done, when I was doing all this studying, working, it was like I weren't in my head because I was thinking somewhere else. That's I was right. just thinking yeah. at this end goal. After seeing this one rich Russian woman, my head went. I turned fucking like, mm -hmm. it was mental, mate. It was mental. It was honestly like, I always knew that I was going to be a success. Ever since I failed school, my dad said to me at 16, you absolute cunt. What are you going to do yourself now? I think, I'll never forget it. 
was sitting in the car with my dad and he went, you absolute C-U-N-T, I've said it already, I ain't going to say it twice. What are you going to do with yourself now? And I turned around and looked at him. I went, I'll be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. Mm. My dad is old school. You know what they're like? Yeah. The old school quite negative, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You have to have the grades. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Your brother's done it. Get a trade. Get a trade. You ain't going to be fucking doing anything now because you fucked up in school. You didn't listen. And I remember looking at him in the eye and going, listen, don't worry about me then. By the time I'm 30, I'll be a millionaire. So... That's how it started, man. Mm -hmm. And I just ended up being so just in, like, I just, everything I'd done, I wanted more, wanted more. I weren't bothered about carpentry. I weren't bothered about building. I was more bothered about my lunch break, being up the West End, seeing, like, the Lamborghinis drive around mm -hmm. and shit like that. And um, I just one day just, just got up and said to my boss, this ain't for me, mate. I need to go by mm -hmm. myself. I need to go and find, I need to go and find myself. And at the time, then I was 23. And um, he said, listen, if you go now, you're not coming back. So that was a big step for me. Yeah. That was like, I was out of my comfort zone completely. I had bills to pay and I had no one to rely on. I don't come from a wealthy family. So I was like, fuck it, I've got Massive to go and do risk. it. I've got to go do, and do it. Do you think your dad saying that to you was a fuel that you needed to say, I'm going to prove you wrong? Because he maybe laughed and you thought... Uh, I don't know. Do you know, do you know what it was? It, it, this made it even worse. So what happened was, is I left that job and I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I was like, fuck, well, I ain't got a job no more. Sweet, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do something. I'll buy and I'll, like, I've got some tools left from being carpet. I'll put them on eBay. Mm -hmm. When I'm telling James, not a pot to piss in. Not a pot to piss in. I didn't have a tenner. Unless I sold something on eBay, I'd wait for that money and that would get me through until I could sell the next thing. Mm -hmm. But what it done for me was, it made me get obsessed with going to the gym at the time. So I was always in good shape, but then I got into serious shape. I was going to gym every single day. I was training like a lunatic. I sold all of my tools and went to Ibiza for two weeks. Come home, carried on training. Anyway, next thing you know, I was like, this is getting too much. I started sleeping, not getting up late. And my dad would come in from work and go, you fucking bum, what are you doing in bed still? And in my head, I weren't being a bum because I was waiting for the next opportunity. Anyway, my best my best friend um, went away for seven years. My best, best friend. And um, it affected me badly. I felt like I didn't, I just, I just, I couldn't get made around it. Look, like my friend had been taken away from me. So um, I'll never forget, I was in, um, I went to visit him. And I was talking to him because uh, the only way Essex had messaged me on Instagram or, or Twitter at the time, whatever it was, saying, we want you to come on the show. And I laughed it off. I was like, I ain't from Essex. Fuck that shit. Why am mm -hmm. I going to do that? I went and see my friend and I'll never forget sitting down with him. And he, he actually got 14. He was going to do it. He was doing a seven at the time. And we were so young, man. We was kids. We didn't even live. We didn't get to live our life properly at the time mm -hmm. together. Me and him was like so close. I looked at him one day and he went to, what are you up to then? I went... I'm just getting like in that transition period. I went, mate, you never guess what? Yeah, that fucking only has Essex is wrong, mate. They're gonna laugh, mate. Fucking load of shit. <laughs> he went to me, yeah, you're gonna do it then, yeah? I'm, I'm a fuck gonna do that. You're having a laugh. I'm not even from Essex. It's muggy. Why would I wanna do that for? He went, do you wanna end up in here then? And it hit me. Sank hit me. He went, do you wanna end up where I am, do you? And it hit me, man. And I was like, fuck. That's so true. What am I going to do? Am I going to end up in the wrong, like doing the wrong thing here? Because I've got no income. I've got no GCSEs. I can't do anything. I'm a useless fucker. Am I going to end up going down the wrong road here and ended up sitting here with him for, for, for seven years? Mm. As I left that visit, I would come out, got my phone at locker, turn my phone on, add a message. Can we come and interview you? And just off the back of that, where I'd sat in my mate, who I felt like we could, we've lost so much time together and all of that stuff. I'll just text back saying, come on and come see me. And I went and done it. And off the back of it, I was like, if and an R and I went to see him again. I went, he went, how'd you get on with that thing? I went, load of shit in it. He went, mate, he said, if you don't fucking do this show, mm -hmm. don't come and visit me again. Mm -hmm. So I went and done it. I went and done it. And I had a plan and I had my dad in my ear roll again. Mm -hmm. saying, you ain't just going to go on this TV show and think you're going to be a celebrity. You need to fucking get something behind you. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that if that show stops tomorrow, you've got something lined up. Mm -hmm. So I started that in 2014. At the time, I feel like um, I was still a kid. 
I was 24. I was fucking, I had a big watch on. Fucking, that I'd sold everything to get. I didn't have a pot to piss in. I had to borrow money off my brother to buy some clothes to go on the show. And I was just like young and I had nothing to lose at the time. Mm. So I'd done it and I just, uh, it didn't work for me the way I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna go on there and be like the next Joey Essex. Yeah. I just had that in my head. I thought I was, I felt like I was in good shape at the time. I had a bit of chat. I got on there and it all just come to me. And the harsh reality is mate, when you get on in there, it fucking don't. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. What was the response like from people? Larry Cunt. Yeah. Larry Cunt. I was a Londoner. I was, I'd like come from a different background. I was, you like an outsider? Um, no, I blended in with them on the show because mm -hmm. I knew a lot of them from going out and yeah. things like that. It was cool. It was good as gold with the cast <laughs> members. I had a fucking absolute blinder, <laughs> mate. But I, like, I'll come on in Ibiza. Mm -hmm. I had the best time of my life out mm -hmm. there, mate. I was getting paid to go out to Ibiza mm -hmm. and, and just go out there and do a bit of filming. I loved every minute of it. Come home, things, it didn't work for me, man. It didn't work for me. It's dark, dark place to be in, mate. I felt like I've, I had this opportunity, look, which was the best thing ever. I thought I was going to start getting club appearances. Yeah. I think I got one club appearance in Glasgow. Yeah. That was it. Yes. Went Good. up there, had an iron brew, yeah. fucking come back. And that was the only thing, that was the only, only mm -hmm. appearance I got. But, but one, I didn't earn a penny. But you're the most successful person to come out of that show. I believe now. I feel like people would argue that. Yeah, but, you can let yeah. them argue, bro. Listen, I'm not daft. I see what, what yeah. you're achieving and you've done it all through hustle, grind, belief, yeah. failure, thinking that you're not good enough. It's, there's nothing worse than thinking you're, you're a failure. It's Never really falling in anything through. But you're a prime example, brother. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted you on as well today because the success, success leaves clues. People mm. need to understand that your story, and I've watched a lot of your stuff to understand that you've came from fuck all. Mm. You can't, you're dyslexic, you can't do your times table, but the fact you're running a multi-million pound business is unbelievable. Mm. It takes guts, mate. And, guts. And I know you spoke about stuff like mental health as well. Did you struggle with that, getting attention and the social media no, can be bad? No, do you know what it was? Do you know, do you know what it was for me? It was like, look, people will watch this and say, shut up, you're a prick. You're talking bollocks. I didn't want fame, mate. I still don't feel like I'm famous. I feel like I'm well known on Instagram because... I've got whatever viewers the show has transcended to my Instagram. And I never wanted that. I didn't want to walk down the street and get pictures of people. I just didn't want it. I was, like, I was quite private. I'm actually a bit of a recluse. Anyone that knows me will know I don't like being in crowds of people. I've like, I like being with certain people and I'm quite quiet when I'm by yeah. myself. So it was exhausting, man. I had to keep up with it nonstop. So I, I couldn't go down the street like, and have a, like if I was on a night out, I couldn't stop and have a piss in the doorway because there's the next geezers behind you trying to film you and do it. I couldn't get my head around that. Yeah. I couldn't get my head around how it was acceptable for people to be a grass to you. So if I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing, that someone could whip a camera and take a picture of me and sell it to the newspaper. Yeah. I couldn't get my head around that. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I just couldn't, I just like, it made me paramate. I was like, fuck, I need to make sure I do everything right here. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that come out about me, there was a few things like was stupid little bits and pieces that could have fucked my relationship up. And it was like, I was innocent in them situations. Both times I was under the influence of drink, yeah? And I was innocent in them situations. And just because people had fabricated stories about me on the show and all that, I come out looking guilty. So that put me on a paramate. I couldn't trust anyone. Mm -hmm. So all, for, all, all I could do at the time was all right, sweet. Well, I don't want to do this TV career for a long time, yeah? I'm not going to become anyone from this. You ain't going to catch me in the jungle. You ain't going to catch me <laughs> on Diet and Diet Sass. Yeah. Big brother. No, mm -hmm. because I'm not, I'm, listen, I've not got the hunger that other people have to succeed in that game. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't want to go to a fucking awards and talk to every fucker under the sun and have to be nice to every single person because they're up there in the industry. I don't want to do that. Is that pretentious as well? That's how it works, yeah. mate. It's the same as working as an office. If you work in an office, everyone loves the director, don't they? They're like, oh, hello, yeah. when they see him in lift. I don't want that. Yeah, like nice. I'll talk to everyone the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're a cunt, you're a cunt. That's just how it works. And I'm like, in this game, I'm like going to a few events, like, it weren't for me, man. Mm -hmm. Weren't for me. I would get papped outside these events 
And the Daily Mail won't even buy my pictures. Because I weren't, like, I just weren't that guy. Mm. I didn't hit it the way I thought I was going to hit it on TV. I, mm. weren't, I weren't made for it. And I sat there one day and I went to my dad, all right, fuck this dad, yeah? My car's £150 a month. I can't afford it this month. What am I going to do? He said, why don't you start by selling that 10 grand AP you got on your wrist? And it just clicked, man. Everything clicked. I got brought into a club what my friends had bought. They give me shares to like be the front man of it. I had this big watch on. I was going to these events. I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? Because I look like I'm the bollocks at the minute. Mm -hmm. Anyone looking at me now, you think you're having it off, ain't you? I had never had a pot to piss in. I couldn't pay my gym memberships. I was on the show giving it a big one to people and I must have looked like a rich geezer. I did not have a fucking pound. I weren't paying rent at home, yeah? Sometimes didn't have a petrol to put in my car to get to filming. Georgia had to drive me a few times to work because I never had the money to get there. That's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. People don't like admitting that sort of stuff. Yeah. That's the reality of what it took. I had to say to Georgia, George, listen, would you be able to drop me to filming? I've not, I ain't got no petrol in my car and I'd have to make things up. I'd have to make it up to go and do it. And it weren't until I got the club, brought into that, I was like, all right, cool. Started earning a few quid out of the club, like weekly wages that would give me the right amount of money. And it started off saying small. Next thing you know, the club explodes, man. It went, whoa, I was getting about five grand a week out of it at one point. It was wicked. And then boom, stopped, mate, out of nowhere. One weekend, stopped. You could never ever imagine for something to just go bang. One minute it's got a thousand people in, next minute it's not a soul in there. Why? Just certain things that happened politically, um, the area, police shutting the club down because there was a few fights outside, so on, so on. It stopped. So I was back to square one again. Yeah. Didn't have a pot to piss in. That's the thing, man. People see people on TV and they put them on a pedestal. They don't realise the more fame, the more success comes, the more pressure and the more depression, the more fear, 100%. the more guilt. And everybody's human beings. That's where the trolling comes into play as well through social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah. And it's disgusting as well. And it's bad, man. People need to understand that we're all fucking human beings. We can't, we're not blocked from anything. Put it this way. Listen, in my life, and I feel like I've had a like a busy life for someone my age. I had a lot of jobs. I started partying very early. What are you eating? A biscuit? <laughs> I, was, I, had a, I had a lot of jobs. I started partying early doors. I knew a lot of people. I was in. I was. I was going out of a lot of older people. I felt like I lived my life like young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In them years, from there up until I got to twenty three, do you think some geezer would come walking up to me and go to me? you're a wanker or your birds are slag mm -hmm. or you're a fat cunt. In my whole life, no one has ever come up to me and said that. Soon as all of a sudden I'm on TV, mate, everyone on Twitter's got something to say to me. Everyone's got, everyone can say it then, can't they? Because they're behind yeah. the keyboard. Mm -hmm. That affected me. That affected me badly because I was older than a minute. I've just come in here. I'm well liked off TV. Yeah, I've got a lot of pals. And I've just come onto this show and now people have got their opinion, think they can call me this, this and this. Yeah. And I found that was a long time. That took me about a year to adapt to, to look at it and go, oh, stupid cunts. I wouldn't yeah. say it to my face. I struggled with that more than anything. Did you retaliate? Some messages? Yeah, man. I used to let them have it. <laughs> I used to let them have it, mate. <laughs> I, I used to have, man, and a few of the things I've done, I, I can't even mention which, like, to a troll, someone trolled me bad, man, and said something about my mum. Or, saying, or, or when my dog died, someone said something bad, bad about my dog. And I remember looking on there and they never had no picture, but I written their email address in and their Facebook come up. They only live around the corner to me, mm -hmm. someone I knew who was doing it to me. So I went around their ass, didn't I? And like, even then I stopped myself from being yeah. all of that violent stuff, which I don't agree with because it's just negative. You lose your career. Lose my career yeah. over it. And I, I found it hard to deal with, man. Like, I lost all freedom doing what I had to do. Yeah. That's I sacrificed my freedom. Yeah. I sacrificed all of that. But it learns and it grows you and it gives you the platform to make the sacrifices to get where you it are does, today 100%. as well. And like I say, you went in with a game plan. Your dad says that you need to make sure when this goes in its ass. But it's not in its ass, but when this goes, you've got something to fall back on. Yeah. A lot of the other people don't do that because people see, same as people going to Love Island, they think they've made it. No cunt hears of them six months later. No do you know what I mean? 
You're getting used. You're, you're a pawn in their game. They're making fucking millions, advertisements, sponsorships. You're used and then you're flat in your ass. There's only a select few who's still kicking forward. A lot of people who are on that show, do they struggle mental health? Is it try to live up with the Joneses? Everyone does, mate. I, I think with our generation, um, 18 to 30, I would say 90% of people suffer with mental health in some way. Yeah. I would say, well, who I've come across. Who I've come across, because look, one minute you're, uh, you think you're this big celebrity guy, let's fucking this, this and this. Next minute Love Island comes out and you're fuck all. Because mm-hmm. everyone's watching Love Island. But don't worry, the same person on Love Island's getting all the attention now, it stops for them as well. So yeah. you better make sure you stack all your money, mate. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was like, I see all that stuff and I predicted it all. The whole time I was like, I ain't going to be anyone here. I ain't got it in me to fucking be a presenter. I can't read. I don't want to be a fucking presenter. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be asking someone else's story. I want to be telling mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I don't want to be reading someone else's book. I'm going to be writing my own. People mm-hmm. reading mine. So I just couldn't couldn't get that. So I just started like, um, just started like resenting the show a little bit and just sort of like not wanting to be there. And just everything was about me and how am I going to get this thing? And I, then the shoe, the shoe thing clicked. Yeah. Shoe thing clicked. I used mm-hmm. to get a lot of tweets about people saying, I wear good shoes. Always loved them. And I remember one day I had a meeting and it started off, I wanted to make a shoe box to put my trainers stacked up. I wanted like them all to be the same. That's how the, that's how the mm-hmm. idea come out. So it was just a light bulb moment? It was a light bulb moment just to make a shoe box. Because I was actually meeting with an agent at the time, moaning, saying, I can't, I ain't getting no work. She went, you need to start a product. So what do you like? I said, shoes, make a shoe box. So anyway, I've done that and that, that probably lasted for about a day. I was like, why the fuck am I going to make a shoe box, man? I need the shoes to go with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've done a shoot for a close friend of mine, Jake, that owns a brand called Preview. We sort of started around the same time. And um, I was doing a shoot with him. Like he said, I couldn't come to a shoot. And I had these shoes on. It was like a YSL pair of shoes. And I loved them. And I thought, fucking, how much was these, Jay? It was, like, it was about 400 quid. I didn't have the 400 quid around me at the time. So I drew them up on a bit of paper, just randomly. I don't know, I was just sketching them. I might have been on the phone or something. And I was just started sketching this shoe up. And then I thought, oh, that's a shit drawing, man. <laughs> that's a shit drawing, man. <laughs> anyway, that night I've gone to a nightclub and bumped into someone who ended up winning Love Island, Nathan. Mm-hmm. Nathan introduces me to his friend, Evren. I ain't met this guy, but this guy's got something about him. And I'm like, oh, hey, this kid's smooth, you know. I like this fella. Like, I had a suit on and all that, and I just ended up clicking with him. Ended up talking to him, saying, what do you do, blah, blah, He said, oh, I'll, I'll do production in, 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 in Europe for all that clothing. I didn't think anything of it. I went home that, that, that night or afternoon the next day, and then that week when I st- started coming around and processing I'd met this guy, I was like, I need to make this shoe. I had that geezer on me the other day. I wonder if he can. He knows anywhere I can make him. I rang him on the Friday and I went, I met you last week. He said, yeah, I remember you nut off. We had a blind, blah, blah, blah. I went, can you make shoes? He went, I can try. I sent him this drawing and I literally, to the speck of this, I sent him a picture of a trait, like a drawing that I'd done with a pen and pencil and I got some colouring pens and colours and I put like red, black, white, blue. Sent them to him, yeah? The f- next Friday, he rings me and goes, mate, remember you asked me to make them shoes? I've done them. So I'm like, fucking hell. I only wanted them custom for myself. Mm-hmm. I was going to wear them, yeah? I went and met him in um, back in Island, and funny enough, and he's just got the table full of these trainers. And I'll never forget that moment. I come in there and I see my name in the, in, on, in the inside of a shoe. It was the proudest moment I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And I had Georgia with me, funny enough, and I've gone in there and I was like, Wow. Man, I look back, man. These shoes was fucking shit, James. <laughs> was it, I was like, a slip on? Was that yeah, the, yeah, yeah, was the yeah. best thing ever? Yeah, I was like, smelling them and everything. I yeah. was like, wow. I was like, whoa, oh, this is this is better than the shoe I thought. Oh, I was mm-hmm. so excited. I went, let's make let's make some. He went, I went, how much do you want? Like, how much will you charge me? And you take care of the production. I'll just buy them off you And I never forget, yeah. And this was probably my first ever proper business meeting. And it was with a guy my age. And he was switched on, man. Mm-hmm. He was chatting and he had his phone. I remember he put his phone down, shut his book, put his pen down and went, why don't we become business partners? And for some reason, I would never normally go to someone. All right, yeah, cool. 
I just went, deal, shook his hand, didn't even talk percent with him. And just from then, it's just, that's where the journey began, from that day onwards. How many shops he's in? A couple hundred. Many countries? Uh, England, Holland, France, uh, Dubai, South Africa. Uh, well, the fuck knows, a lot. That's, that's a lot, but the top level stores though. How was it your first year, two years? Terrible. Why? Because I lost everything twice over. How come? Because, and do you know what? And I don't, I don't mind sharing the secrets behind the game because and there's one thing that gets to me, yeah? I used to, I used to, what's happening, mate? <laughs> I used to, I used to, I used to look at, I used to look at all this stuff, like what other people are doing and think it was easy. Yeah. It's just saying you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at what you do. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with all the yeah. videos and how you're doing it. I would probably, if I went, didn't have my shoes, I'd probably try to start a podcast mm -hmm. off and think, fuck it, I can't be that hard. That's what I've done with shoes. Yeah. And I was like, we're sitting there and we're like, all right, let's get this, let's get this together. How many pairs can we order? My partner was like, 100 pairs. That was my biggest investment of my life. That was a 4,000 pound investment at the time, or probably a bit more, whatever it was. Biggest investment I'd ever made. And I was so scared. So I mate, what if we don't sell them? 100 pairs, nice, too much, man. We ordered 100 pairs of shoes, yeah? And I remember, imagine, remember coming back, it was like, uh, 20 sitting there, stacked up, 20 there, 2 there, and I stood next to it so proud. I was like, mate, it's better work, man. This is fucking huge. Anyway, we got the website made cheaply, crashed on the first day, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't spend money on the fucker. The shoes fitted a size too big. Mm -hmm. We thought the drop was going to be amazing. We sold one pair in the first two hours, man. All of the hype like, I had. It didn't work, James, mm -hmm. man. Mallet didn't work to start with. No matter what way I fabricated and made it look to the, to everyone, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work the second time either. But 99% of success is failure. Failure, failure is where the growth is, man. Mate, failure is you know a beautiful what? thing. Listen, do you know what? When I look back here, some of the best times of my life was launching a business because we was we was like borrowing like a shed off someone. It was basically a shed yeah. where we kept our stock, yeah? It had a fucking leak in the roof. <laughs> and when it rained, we had to run to the scaff and we had to move all the stock to make sure it didn't yeah, get wet, yeah. yeah? We used to sit there, me and my partner together, and it used to make a ching noise when the sale went through. We would race to, to, to pick it out because we wanted to pack the box. Mm -hmm. And it was like that for a good year, man. And there was a lot of talk about why would we buy this prick from Towie stuff? Everyone thinks it was easier because I had a social media following. Trust me, that made it harder for me. Mm -hmm. I did guys like yourself. If I was just a guy off Towie and you didn't know my story, I'd just be another, another reality TV star. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna wear a reality TV star name on my shoes. Yeah. It was to the extent where I didn't even put my name on the shoes, James. Just had an inside, yeah? So that made it harder. I had to get through that. I was like, fuck, how am I gonna get rid of this stigma of me just being this reality star? I'm working mm -hmm. hard, man, I'm trying. Yeah. Didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work. So and how then did you change that? I put a lot of dedication and hard work into it and a lot of sleepless nights. What a sacrifice. A lot of sacrifice. I sacrificed everything, mate. I got rid of everything. I did not have nothing. I had nothing for the first two years. Not a penny. Didn't take a pound out of the business. But my, if I had to travel somewhere, I had to pay for it myself mm -hmm. to lend the money. Like before we knew it, we was like it was 60 grand in debt over the two years. And then and like, it was only getting worse. It was only getting worse. And then the, the click moment for me, what done it all for me was, I thought, Do you know what, fuck this. I was like, I need to start earning money elsewhere instead of just focus on the business. I can't do it no more. So I started doing a few teeth whitening posts here and there, <laughs> yeah, and all that stuff. And I earned good money out of it. But I remember sitting there so pissed off when I was getting paid thinking, I've just earned some other person money, man. That should be mine. Anyway, I had a meeting in Manchester with some, 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 the twins from Manchester, the yeah, two no, guys, yeah, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah? Two close friends of yeah, mine, yeah? guys. And they're like, they were like family to me, man. Like, they helped me out with clothes, they, if I need anything, they'd send me fucking... I see everyone with their clothes on, man. I remember them starting that, man. I had the first ever hat. And what happened was, is they, I said to them, I want to get in a store. If we can get in a store, we can showcase our product and people can see it, and then we might have a better chance. So anyway, I go to Manchester, yeah? 
the twins picked me up. They picked me up in a fucking Rolls Royce with a flat back tyre, yeah? Twins hats on, so I've got my hat on. They take me to Flannels for a meeting, which is a store that I'm in now, it's huge. They got them in um, yeah. Scotland, Cruise and yeah, all that, yeah. 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 i never forget the first meeting I ever went to, they took me in a Rolls Royce Wraith. They left the samples in the back of the car, went in there, said, you need to buy this guy's trainers. Go and get the stuff out of the boot, blah, blah, blah. Went to this meeting and they said to me, you're gonna need an agent to get into these stores. So I'm hyped up now. I was like, boys, I think we've done it. Fuck, yes. Mm -hmm. Skipping, skipped home from Manchester. Can't believe it. The week after I went and met the agent, who's actually a, uh, a close friend of mine now. So no offense, I'm just telling the story. <laughs> I love him to bits, uh -huh. yeah. He pushed me a lot to do, to do what I've done. So the, the guy went, you need an agent to go and pursue this, yeah? We need to buy this off through an agent. I didn't know what I was doing. When I met this agent they recommended, yeah? He comes in late to the meeting, 10 minutes late. He's on the phone. He went, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm, what, what am I looking at? Or he went, all right, yeah, it ain't good enough. Yeah, it ain't gonna work for us. We've got this good thing over here. He didn't even really acknowledge me, this guy, mm -hmm. yeah? And I was obvious, that's where I feel like that street mentality of mine come back because I just went straight on my toes, yeah? yeah. And I was like, I was, couldn't believe what was happening here. But there was one guy there who I'm close friends with now as well, mm -hmm. who was sort of comforting me. And he was like, look, man, it's just not the right time. I was like, no, it is the right time. <laughs> We're fucking going to do yeah, something with this stuff. And I'm going to make this better than right. Anyway, the guy that was on the phone and went, I've got to leave, got a next meeting now, just swerved it. And he went, not for us. You don't even have to do the drawings on a computer, you're done on pen and paper. And I remember the drive home from Manchester, I felt like it took me two days to get home, yeah? I was sitting there and I was fucking, and I never told anyone this, yeah? I was driving home, I was so upset, yeah? I was driving like an AMG at the time that I'd borrowed. I nearly drove it into the back of a lorry. My head was that fucked off the back of that meeting. It was so bad, mate. I was driving home and I was fucking crying. I was screaming. I was smoking fag after fag. I was like, all the windows open trying to like, just calm down. Mm. Anyway, I got home. My dad had called me down. He said, look, you're going to get nose, man. You need to accept the nose. You're getting closer to the yes. Just keep getting the nose. That day, I thought, I'll get up. Oh, shit. I'm <laughs> that day, I thought, I'll get up early and I'll go straight to the gym. Yeah, I need to let their anger out. I need to go boxing. So I'm in the gym and this guy comes up to me, Chris, who I ended up being a close friend with now. I'd always seen him around because he was, he, had, he, was, he was really, really big and he lost like 15 stone, this guy, yeah? And I, I was quite inspired by what he's doing. I'd never spoken to him, never caught eyes with him. He comes and nods me on the shoulder, yeah? He goes, listen, I love seeing what you're doing. You don't know me, but take this hands me a book and I was like yeah all right mate sweet uh why he's like I can feel your energy from over there your energy is fucking ridiculous secret read this book yeah it's gonna change your life but I'm embarrassed I don't want to tell him I can't read so I went mate no no it's yours man do your thing with it no please it can benefit you more than what it can me please read this book so I said all right thank you I'll take it it was the secret yeah yeah I knew that took this book. I went home and I thought, fuck it, man, I'll give it a go. Mate, it took me about three hours to read like the first three pages, because mm. I can't read. I tried as hard as I could, couldn't do it. Anyway, I was like, fuck, man, this book could have made me fucking better. What am I gonna do here? Ended up downloading the audio book, listened to it nonstop, yeah? Anyway, within three days of me meeting this guy, I went, that's gonna be the biggest regret he's ever done ever, ever looking at me and telling me that I'm not good enough. He will regret this more than anything. He, he'll come back to, he will come back in my life one day. Yeah. I'd practice the secret, <laughs> yeah? But yeah. I knew then, if I'm reading that, I thought, fuck, you know, I am one powerful geezer when it comes to this industry now. Mm -hmm. I weren't, I was fucking didn't have pots of piss at the time. Mm -hmm. Didn't even have no investment left. I was like, I'm gonna do this now. That's it, done. My goal is to show him that I'm better than the brand that he put in front mm -hmm. of me, yeah? And to act, overdo him in all their sales, and he's gonna come back to me, and we're gonna and we're gonna have that conversation again. Mm -hmm. I'll give myself a year. I've done it in three months. I've done it in three months. I'd got my first store and become the top selling brand in the store within three months. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I took it from being in debt for six hundred uh, sixty grand 
to turning over about 600 grand in a few months. It's that quick I've done it. Just was changing a few strategies and just no, mate, becoming more focused. I was a fucking savage. But I mean, what that does, what that sacrifice and being a savage in business, did that change a lot of other things though from the people around you when you become work ethic and just work driven? That I looked at it like this, yeah? I took so many no's in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got. I, I took. I was always a useless fucker. If I can't do this, I'm a useless fucker. If I can't turn this round and do what I want to do and fucking stand up to everyone and say, "Listen, say what you want. I'm gonna make something out of this." I'm a useless fucker. And from then onwards, it just come to me, man. Don't talk to me about anything else. Mm-hmm. Don't invite me out. Don't. I don't want to hear about nothing. This is where it's at. And I'm going to make this into one of the biggest beasts in the country you've ever seen, yeah? Mm-hmm. And just month after month after month, it was growing, man. It was like, it was getting bigger. It was fucking getting bigger warehouses. It was that grand that warehouse. We started off with like 100 pairs. Next thing you know, I'd sold like 50,000 pairs. Next thing you know, I'm selling 50,000 pairs a season. Then it's 80,000 pairs a season. Then I'm talking to like Selfridges. And then next thing you know, I've got Selfridges. I'm like, fuck that, I want Harrods now. And I'm in Harrods. And then I've got the biggest store in Dubai. Then I've got people hitting me up from South Africa and I'm at Paris Fashion Week with them. Mm. And I'm like, whoa. All right, yeah, let's get busy yeah, now. Yeah. Let's get busy mm. now. I ain't a fluke. I'm going to show you how I can fucking yeah. do this. And then I looked there and I said to myself, I'll, I'll be the best best brand in the UK without foul. Whatever anyone wants to says about, say about my brand, I, I own the best footwear brand in the UK. Yeah. I've got the, the most fastest growing footwear brand in the UK. And people would like to test that and things like that. The numbers don't lie. In the stores I sell to, I'm the top brand. Why is your trainer so cheap? Reasonable well, price. I like, is that, that, question. Is that, I like be- that question because a lot of people say is to me- Is that because you never had much as a kid? Basically, the, the, the concept behind the shoe was, is the way I was feeling when I was in a building site, not being able to buy the six, 700 pound yeah. shoes, yeah? I wanted to get rid of. But I still didn't want to make it too cheap mm-hmm. and make something shit. I wanted to give the maddest, like I wanted to give them a premium product at a further the price. Yeah. And I achieved it. And that's because I wanted the builder. I wanted the builder who wants to go to the pub on a Friday to be able to go to his shop, buy a pair of my shoes and fill the bollocks in them. Even down to the packaging. I wanted him to be able to keep the box and be proud of it. And that's why I wanted to put my prices up. I've been asked millions of times. Yeah. You can add the price up, put the price up. People write to me on Instagram saying, oh, you forgot where you come from. Your shoes are too expensive. Yeah. Mate, I'm selling in stores that sell 6,000 pound fucking crocodile yeah. shoes, yeah? I'm I'm literally giving you something the best quality you can get yeah for the money you're spending yeah. and I'm not putting the price up even through Brexit and all that stuff didn't put a price up I stayed true to what I was doing mm-hmm. and I did my plan I was like do you know what I'm going to be the brand of the people I'm going to do yeah. it so I've stuck to that and I've kept the prices exactly the same and mate every store we go in man it's just motors in there yeah. it's one minute like oh let's have the conversation to get in the store next minute I'm top seller some of the stores I've been in the window for four years. How does that make you feel? Um, do you appreciate that? Do you step back and go, I'm doing well? No. Or do people say you're doing well, but don't really feel it still? Because um, people always say it myself, oh, you're doing well, but I don't feel fuck I all. find it very hard to take a compliment of people saying, yeah. well done. If you say it to me, I feel like I can't look you in your eyes and take yeah, it. Yeah, getting embarrassed, getting presents getting and stuff. Getting embarrassed. Uh, like one, one, I feel a bit embarrassed, but two is because I don't feel like I'm doing that well, man. <laughs> yeah, I ain't, no, yeah. I'm telling you yeah, now, mate. I, I promise yeah. you now, yeah. Mm. I'm just getting started. Yeah. No matter what sort of money we're turning over at the minute, don't mean nothing, man. Yeah. Don't mean nothing. And I'll get to that in a bit, but it all comes down to having good relationships with your, with your, with your customers, yeah? Mm-hmm. Having fun doing it. Going Paris Fashion Week and meeting all the buyers and taking them on the piss. All of that good stuff, is, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Me being able to inspire kids. Being able to inspire inspire kids to go out and go and get it, that means more to me than anything. Yeah, you've got to enjoy the journey. Sometimes we can yeah. concentrate on the finishing line too much and we forget to live. But you've had guys now like Conor McGregor, Will yeah. I Am, yeah. Floyd Mayweather, yeah, all yeah. your brand, the biggest names on the planet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes when you live it, 
and you don't take compliments or somebody gives you a present you would get embarrassed it's bad man but you've got to take a step back and go do you know what even a five minutes in a room yourself and, and punch the air and just go fucking no, yes no do you know why I love James because and, and, and this is what I'm trying to work on I wish I could but I can't mm-hmm. I can't do it because there ain't a finish line in place everything's limitless and, and I feel like looking at this now there's always something that I want I can't I can't go somewhere and look at it and be satisfied. I've just not got that inside me. How do you find balance then? Oh, it's, it's tough, man. I'm, I feel like I've got... For the way I've been and the passion I've got and me not being able to just sit back and actually think, do you know what, yeah? I'm 28. My future's set, man. My future is set. If mm-hmm. I want to retire, I can retire. There's nothing stopping me. I don't never have to go to work again. But I still live a normal life. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Don't wear, I don't wear watches. Don't wear Rolexes and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I wear a sports watch. Most of the time you see me, I'm wearing gym stuff. I don't live like anywhere out of my means. I still live like a normal person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I eat the same food every day, five days what a week. Eat? I eat after the morning. I have um, porridge, mm-hmm. and then I have uh, like eggs, and then I have like turkey with pasta, turkey mince with pasta, every day, mate. Do you know why? <laughs> Shall I do right. that? Because unless I unless I do some big big deal or or I achieve something, then I'll go and reward myself. But if I'm just doing my normal day to day shit, I ain't got time to think what am I gonna eat tonight. I know where it is in the kitchen. I know how to cook it quick. Yeah, I know where it's got. Di- I know how many calories I'm consuming. I know that I'm not gonna feel like shit after. I eat the same thing every single day. I'm so regimented what I do. Do you think that's why you're so grounded though? Because all the shit you went through in the past, the wee bit of emotional bullying that. Like- but not physical, but mentally, and then um, not really having much, yeah. feeling like a failure, can't read, can't really understand certain things. Do you think that's what's <laughs> gave you the drive then to succeed? And it's not really your last chance if this failed, but in the way you're speaking is if, if I don't make it here, then I'm yeah. just going to go have fuck all. I feel like with this, the reason I'm like, the reason I'm so ambitious, yeah, is because money don't buy f- for happiness. Everyone knows that. And we'll catch on that. We do need to talk about that because that's a really, really strong one we need to mm-hmm. talk about. But all the money does is gives you a bit of freedom, yeah? And means you can look after family members. That's all it should matter to you. shouldn't mm-hmm. matter about you can go and buy a gold watch, go and buy a Ferrari. It's not how it works, man. Yeah. Success comes and the money follows, yeah? Yeah. I ain't flaunting nothing in no one's faces. I don't give a shit. I, I, I don't want to flaunt. I've, I've had nice cars. Yeah. I've had every car under the sun. I don't want them. It's funny that because when you've got fuck all, you're always trying to impress as if you have. I'm the same. I'm more financially secure than I've ever been. I drive a £300 Vectra. Good. I wear a, a watch that my daughter got me for my, my Christmas. Mm. It's, um, I don't need to keep up with the Joneses. I don't need to show that I'm something else. Well, that that's, I'm when not. You, that's when you become rich, yeah. in my opinion. You don't, That's when you become rich in life. When mm. you find the balance, yeah, of how you can just live a quality life without trying to show off in front of yeah, people. It's all smoke that's mirrors. when you're winning. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Listen, I see something the other day, yeah? You got the poor people wearing fucking Gucci and Louis Vuitton mm-hmm. and the rich people wearing fucking yeah. ripped jeans yeah. and Apple watches. Yeah. Come on, man. It's, even when you look where Amazon and stuff started, it started in a very small office. You have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. Do you know what I mean? And you see like, Zuckerberg and you see all these guys, there's no Gucci belt in sight. Not there's no Gucci Rolex. belt in sight, man. Do you know what I mean? People go like, you, it's... You you end up going broke trying to act, uh, yeah. act rich. I've been there. I'm not, I'm not putting my head down on, yeah. on you. I'm not saying anything. I've been there. Yeah. But I've learned how to become humble at the end of mm-hmm. it because I've been through so much dark shit off the yeah. back of it that people wouldn't even believe that I've been through trying to get where I'm today. People think, yeah, like I went on The Only Way as Essex and next thing you know, I've got this big business. Well, if that's true, why the fuck didn't anyone else do it? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Everybody thinks it's easy. And I ain't saying yeah. I'm the most successful one because mm-hmm. there's some successful people of off course. the show. Yeah, yeah. There's some really successful mm-hmm. people on the show. But people don't know like the the where I'm at financially. I don't want anyone to know that. Mm-hmm. I want people to be treating me exactly how they was a few years ago. Yeah. I'm not rich. I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm even getting started. Mm-hmm. But I've been through so much shit to get to where I am. It's put me off of all that stuff. Yeah, it's all bullshit. But I live my whole you've life. You've seen it. You've seen the people on the show struggle and pretend and act. But you've got to understand anybody that takes a shot in life, if that opportunity presents itself, you're willing to grasp it. But people don't understand the backlash that comes from it. And 
what you're willing to do. But if you can utilise that to your advantage, wait a minute, a couple of million people are watching this per week. I can really take off enough. But you never really made it from the back of that. No. You probably lost more sales. Lost so a that's lot. where the hustle really kicks in. Lost a lot. But I'll tell you something. When anyone says about that, listen, I hope I do, I'll come across humble. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come across... I don't want to have a presence and make people feel small, like small around me, like I'm the big shot. I don't want yeah. none of that. There is yeah. people that do that, make people of feel there like is. that. And I've been around the room with loads of them, mate. Mm. I've sat in room with billionaires before. I've sat room where I've sat there with billionaires before, and people worth a few hundred grand. The people with a few hundred grand that are the ones pushing people back because they ain't even got a fucking clue yeah. what's going on, yeah. Mm. And it, do you know what it took for me to realise and wake up so young, and I feel so blessed. Because normally the way it goes is you start a business off, you become successful, you fucking lose your head because of it, you get divorced and you have to start again because you lose all your money. I hear it all the time, yeah? There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that go on like that. For me, I woke up to it really young. I got myself in such a state trying to become successful, yeah? To the point where I'd wake up in the morning, all I cared about was, all right, listen, let's go and get it, let's go and get it. All I cared about was money, success. I fucking... I, I, I lost relationships with people. I become rude. All I cared about was myself. I was selfish. All I cared about every single day was how am I going to get up today and how am I going to make this even bigger? I lost everything down to that, man. People don't realise that. To make this business what it is, I lost everything. I nearly lost my relationship time after time. I lost relationship with my family. I fucking locked myself as a recluse. I had a mental breakdown because of it. All of that, just because I want to fucking look good on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Yeah. That's what this younger generation are chasing, mate. Mm -hmm. And that's what no one gets, yeah? Is I have chased from the age of a kid, all of that just to have the big car. Everyone wants the Rolls Royce, yeah? Everyone wants the big gaff. Everyone wants the, all the, the washes and all that. Does not make you happy. Million percent. Yeah? And I'll tell you why. I set myself an age to earn a certain amount of money, yeah? And I've done it before. And the day that I'd done that, and I actually sat there and could say, I've, I've made what I wanted to make, it was the darkest day of my life. Because I had nowhere to go with it. Cool, well, I've, I've made yeah. some dough. What do you want to do, George? Should we go out of the West End for a nice restaurant? Mm -hmm. No, because I don't like the vibe up there. What should we do? Should we go to McDonald's? Yeah, let's get McDonald's and mm -hmm. sit in the car. I had chased my whole life, yeah, to try and get this bit of success. That's all I cared about. Mm -hmm. I knew I fucking lost out on so much stuff trying to chase after this one bit of dough, yeah? Mm -hmm. And when I actually got it, it was such an anti-climax. Yeah. I was like, fuck. You thought you were going to be complete, and that's the illusion fuck. of life. And Tyson Fury's prime example, wanted to be world champion, millionaire, had all the fame, had everything, won all the belts, and ended up in the lowest point in his life, ended up suicide, on the drink, on the drugs, because we think we'll set a goal, the whole target, our whole life, as soon as we achieve that target, we feel complete. But if then, like you say, the anticlimax is this, that, nothing. Mate. So I always say it's a bit progression. Got to keep raising the bar, week in, week out. You don't know it until you're there, yeah, mm -hmm. of where it can take you. I remember sitting there thinking, all right, cool, what, what do we do now then? All right, first things first, see all that luxury shit that I've got, get rid of it. It's going to make me lazy. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all that shit. I don't need that fucking 150 grand car in my driver. I don't need it. Get rid of it. Everything's going. I'm driving a smart car for the next two years. So I told myself, yeah? Now I've got something a bit more comfortable. But it hit me bad. But you've still got to enjoy your comforts as well. You've still you have, got to, you know what I mean? You have. But if you're obsessed with it, it's the yeah. same as being obsessed with alcohol and drink, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol and drugs. Right. It's exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you become ob that obsessed with money, that like you think the only way yeah, to have a good life is to become rich, yeah? Your life's going to be shit. Mm -hmm. Because when you get there, you're going to regret it. So I started, I, I went through my little bits of like depression from the, from the back of it. And like... You're very big on depression. What, yeah. was, what was your lowest point in your life? That time. When around you, that when time. You hurt, when you hit your targets. When I started when I started hitting my targets, yeah. And I, and I started being in Selfridges and Harrods and things like that. Best time of my life it was planned to be. It wasn't. Why do you think that deflated you so much? Because I was so obsessed with where I'm going to be in the next five years. And everything was vision board. Everything was fucking house in LA, house in Amsterdam, Ferrari, all that shit, man. I didn't feel like I had any value to my life at all. All I cared about was success. And how can I be like, make sure mum and dad are right? 
and how can I, how can, what am I going to do next? How do I look? Do you reckon everyone on the show thinks I'm having it off yet? That's how I thought, man. You have a suicidal? No, my fa- I had a fucking, I've got a great family, man. But what happened was I woke up one day and I felt like I had a stroke. I had this pain in my head. And I couldn't get over it. I was like, oh, fuck. I was in bed, man, and I was crying. Couldn't get out of bed that day. I just wanted to feel better, man. And I was like, I was praying at the time because I've, I've always been spiritual and believed in God, man. I was like, God, I've not done anything, man. What were you putting me through this stress for? What, I don't know what I've done. Ring my, just go into Georgia in the front room and just break down on the floor, man. Drop to my knees. I done enough. I completely fucking lost it. Everything that like, I thought I was, boom, that day. I walked into the front room to Georgia, just dropped on my knees. And I just said, I can't take this no more. Well, I don't know what I've done to deserve this, George, man. Please help me get out of this. I don't know what I'm in. I can't get out of bed. I'm waking up at midday. I'm, I'm, I'm fuck. I, what, 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 how have I become what I've become? And it all come down to stress, man. Come down to stress. As I said, I was chasing the dollar. Chasing this life of me wanting to be someone I want. Did Georgia see this happening to you? Georgia, mate. Georgia's... Georgia's she's been your rock, She's eh? been my rock, yeah. man. Be my rock. If, if Georgia should have said, Georgia would have said to me, "Give it all up that day." Mm. But that's Ain't a powerful thing, yeah. She would have said, "Fuck everything. We don't need it." Mm-hmm. And but how did that relationship blossom from the very start? She must have been what 24, 23, 24? Just, just from love at first sight, man. Mm-hmm. Lived with each other since the day we met. That's amazing. Been together six years now. These must be the longest lasting couple. Yeah, we are. And that's a powerful thing because everybody don't last fucking seven days yeah. do you know what I mean been together six years man mm-hmm. congratulations she's been my rock. thank you mate she's been my rock for everything man she like she just she put, her, put her arm around me and said look you don't need to be doing what you're doing man you don't have to have this front of you being mm-hmm. this businessman you don't have to you don't have to go work every day. You don't. Have, you can just chill. Let's relax. Do you think a lot of the pressures come with seeing other boys driving big cars maybe coming from rich families that you wanted to provide not I've, just yourself but Georgia with those I felt like materialistic George, things? Georgia's family are more comfortable than mine but Georgia's not materialistic. She mm-hmm. don't give a shit. And since Georgia's been with me she's never took a penny off her mum and dad. Everything's mm-hmm. from me and her, yeah? And um, I just, I don't know where it was, mate. I felt like the only way to live life was to be have money. Yeah. And it's fucking, it's not how it works, man. How was that for George and your family to see you struggle with that? Because um, you always come across as strong, independent, yeah. kind of boyish, always like a laugh. Yeah, I feel like it didn't last too long, but I couldn't talk about it for a long time because mm-hmm. without welling up. And we went to the hospital because I thought I'd had a stroke, I had a brain scan, had my blood taken, I was exhausted. And she just said, this is stress doing this to I was like, what? Stress is making my brain wobble, yeah? At 26, 27 years old. 25, mate. 25. Yeah? So then I, I remember leaving that hospital and going down my caravan in Clacton because I felt like that was my place of peace. It made me feel like being a kid again. That was the only place I had around me that I felt that I weren't expected to give anyone anything. I'd just go there and sit at the beach and just think about life. And um, yeah, I pulled through it. I pulled mm-hmm. through it with having a good family and I feel like I helped a lot of people along the way. I um, went out of my way to do a lot of mental health work and let people know it's all right not to be all right and just you can get through this. Mm-hmm. And I spoke about it on the show and it got a huge reaction. And that was one of my greatest achievements ever. That was bigger than anything, man. Speaking out. Speaking out. I say, yeah. I I, listen, I don't think I've got depression. I feel like I had a breakdown for stress and anxiety, but I don't, I've never had it. I've had it a few times since, but until that day, I've never had that before, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. That day was f- dark and I, something was telling me, change your way of life. So then, I, do you know what? And the funniest thing is, and it was like lesson after lesson, that happens. The week later, I've got a Porsche. I love this car forever. Just got it, yeah. Drove it to the barbers, popped it up, dusted it off as I was driving. Walked off. <laughs> when I got my hair cut, come back and someone walks past me in the street. When I hope that in your car down there, mate. I was like, what is it? And he's like, a Porsche. And I was like, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. He went, no, nah, mate, you better get down there. Someone had drove into the side of my Porsche and split my car in half. <laughs> yeah. My car was in half. <laughs> yeah. And that was another lesson for me because uh-huh. I was like, yeah? yeah. Who's done it then? Mm-hmm. Down there, mate. I'm ready to go in there. And it's an old woman. 
So you know what I've done? I just, every bit of anger just went. I yeah. went, darling, come here. I kissed her head. <laughs> Don't worry about yeah. it. We're good. Yeah. It's only a car. It's a bit of metal, mate. Yeah. Fuck it. Ended up just, just leaving it. And that was another lesson. I think and these are all signs. All signs, man. I just carried on going, carried on going. And then I started enjoying work more because I was like, I ain't checking the work bank account. Mm -hmm. uh, do we look good in front of people? Are people wearing it? Are mm -hmm. we top seller? Boom. That's all I need to know. Mm -hmm. I don't care about anything else. Don't fucking ring me about a tax bill, VAT bill, or tell me what we're going to bank account. I don't care. Yeah? I'm going to go out and I'm going to put myself on a small wage and I'm going to make this thing fucking huge. And ever since that day on, mate, I'm telling you, I've had the time of my life again. Mm -hmm. And I wake up every day ready for it. And I just want to take it further and further and further. Because all I've got in my mind right now, yeah, is making this the biggest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Fuck the money. The money don't mean shit. Yeah. And when I, now, now I've got that in my head, mate, I'm living the best life I could so ever imagine. So you're enjoying the process now? James, I love my life. Mm -hmm. I love my life. I've yeah. just, I've got, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm all right financially. I've got a lot, most of my money's in my business. It's, it's doing really well financially. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know how well it's doing at the minute. I ain't even looked into it. I know that it's successful. I know that it's hitting the stars. And I know that I wake up every day, passion to do it. Mm -hmm. Every single day I, work, I wake up and I can't wait to go to work. See, that's a beautiful thing to do, something that you love. So believe me, when I said mm -hmm. to you about getting rid of the watches and the cars and that, yeah? yeah? Once I got rid of all that stuff, my head was back on my target, man. Why am I in doing this? Yeah. Right, I'm doing this because i got people looking at what I'm doing. Kids are looking up to me and I'm going to fucking show them that like anyone can do whatever they want. Yeah. So I've thrown another object at me if you want me to do it. I can yeah. do it. No problem. Because I know you give back a lot and we'll touch on that for kids because you had, it brought a tear to my eye, the bo young boy Freddie. Yeah, yeah, who yeah. He had cystic fibrosis. Yeah. Um, 12 years old, wanted mm. to meet you. Yeah. Designed a trainer for you. Mm. Um Sadly, he's designed that trainer, but the kid passed away, yeah. man, which is heartbreaking. Not only did you still design the shoe and put it out there, but you gave all the money for, a, what was the charity called? Uh, it was called Razor Sunshine. Razor Sunshine so basically, so um, how did that story come about? Oh, mate, you know what? It's hard to talk about, man. Was I struggle. Yeah, yeah, I know. I talk about it, man. When I, that, was, that was a time in my life where that happened, where I was so fucking selfish, man. Mm -hmm. It was just after what had happened to me. My head was fucked, man. I shaved all my hair off. I was fucking 110 kilos. I was like, I'm fucking, I don't even recognize that person no Do you more. Do a lot of anger? Uh, only with myself. Yeah. Only with myself. And I don't know why. And I don't know what I'd done to deserve that much anger towards myself. So it's really weird. Mm. But sleeping pattern my shit, smoking fags, coffee after coffee, Red Bull, traveling around the world, fucking not seeing my family relationship traveling so much to like run away kind of thing to get away I was I feel like I was busy but I needed to get away but me and George's relationship I don't feel like was the strongest then because mm. I was just fucking so selfish it was all about me it's all about me man and I feel like I was like I was like it and then I got a, I got a message one day from my agent and said um, there's a kid that wants to meet you his name's Freddie he's got cystic fibrosis um, he might not have long left he wants to meet you and design a shoe Straight away, I went, no, I ain't doing that. I had the selfish part of my life I was going through and working on myself and I, I ain't doing that because I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to go there and, and commit to anything or it to put me in a bad place again of meeting someone that's potentially going to die. I didn't think I could do it. I was like, I can't do this, man. I can't meet a, a young kid who's dying and then he leaves a mark on me and, and I don't know what I'm going to do. My head's not stable. Anyway, I went on holiday and I just rung major and went, I went, listen, let's meet the kid. It was the best move I'd made in my life, meeting that kid. It changed my life completely. Mm. The fucking best day of my life meeting this kid. He come into my office, pulled up in a Rolls Royce. He had a, like, dressed absolutely beautiful. I wear Louis Vuitton aftershave, yeah? I've never smelled anyone with this one. I've got it, just come out. I've come in, I've cuddled him, he's got it on. I met this kid, man, and I... Uh, I just put all my perspectives in the right place. Mm -hmm. Everything that I was doing, everything that I was fucking waking up in the morning and having problems about, he just got rid of them that day, this kid. I needed to meet this kid. I, like angel. I needed to meet this kid. He was my angel. And he come in and he just didn't want nothing. I said, right, first things first, yeah? 
Got on the computer, let me buy you something. I don't want anything. I said, come, come, you like Gucci, yeah? Let me buy a Gucci tracksuit. He won't let me do it. So I just bought it anyway, delivered it to his ass. Sat down with his kid, man. And I remember I like, someone giving me something and like and, uh, like a bit of paper and I went, I can't read that. And he went, he put his arm on my shoulder, this 11 year old kid, yeah? And went, I saw I'll teach her. And I was just like, wow, this is intense, man. And he sat there drawing his shoe and like, he was just picking up so fast and like everything that he spoke about was nothing about him. It was all about other people. I was fucking learning so much off this kid, yeah? I was like... And by the way, I'd got a camera crew to come and film it for him so his family got it forever. And I thought he was going to come in there and be a bit like quiet under the camera. Mm. This kid come in, mate. <laughs> I can't explain what this kid was. He would have He would have run the world. Come in, he bossed the old thing, had his mic on. He was fucking unbelievable. And that was just just a few key points that day what changed me, man. Of me saying to him, all right, listen, I'm going to bring this shoe out. And what you got excited about. And every bit of money it comes with, I'm going to take you shopping. I'll fucking buy you whatever you want, yeah? Whatever we earn off this shoe, it's yours. He went, no, I'll give it to charity, man. I was like, oh my God, mate, you're f- mm. fucking embarrassing me, man. I'm sitting embarrassed that I'm actually this mess of a person at 25, mm-hmm. so selfish. And I've got this young kid sitting there teaching me all these lessons. And I was like, all right, we'll give it to the charity you want. And man, it, it took too long. And I was chatting to him in Great Ormond Street and he carried on working and was doing his thing. And he was sending me updates of what he was doing. And I'll come close with him. And then I was getting too close with him, but I, I was like, I love this kid, man. And and then woke up one day, I was about to leave the country and I got the text that he died. And that was the f- well, probably one of the toughest days of my life, man. Mm. I felt like I'd let him down so badly because... Yeah, you can't think I, that, bro. I know, not now I don't, I'm good now, but I didn't get the sample in time to, mm. to show him. It was, it, all he needed to do is see this shoe, man. Mm. He fucking, how did I not show him it? And then... Then just little things. I was up the West End. Why didn't I go on Great Ormond Street? What, why, all that started coming back. But then I spoke to his mum and the way his, the words his mum said to me really, really changed me. Just the way she spoke to me of how thankful she was. And I didn't realise how much of a difference I'd made in this kid's life. Mm. And that was, um, that was, that was the change for me, man. I was like, well, look, I'm fucking battling saying here in my own head. I'm trying to change the world. I'm trying to be a multi-millionaire. What one do I want here? What's the most important? Mm. And mine was at the time to fucking make an impact on people. Yeah. And I told myself from that day onwards, that like, everything I'll do, like I'll make sure that I'll give back and I'll always be there and I'll be that, that opportunity that people need. Mm-hmm. I, everyone I've taken on, I've not gone and take people on with university degrees. It's all been people, like young kids with not as many opportunities. I've got people, I've got people around me, like they know they can count on me. And I've really based my life on that now. Mm-hmm. And it was just off the back of meeting this young kid. And do you know what? It's the first time I've ever spoke about it and not cried. Yeah. The first time I've ever spoke about that kid mm-hmm. and not cried my eyes out. Yeah. That's a good thing to show that You've came a long way and it's a beautiful thing helping others, man. It's There's no gift, better gift in life than helping others. The gift yeah. in life I always believe is giving. Now we can make all the money, we can do all the bullshit, but if you've got a kid there who's passed away at 12 years old and yet we're worrying about polishing up a Porsche, how much watch we can f- afford, it don't mean fucking it shit mean because your health man. is your wealth and you nothing. talk about hiring people who's not really... Why do you think I hired Nick? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sleeping beauty, do you know what I mean? You've got to give to the poor mate and the needy mate. <laughs> yeah, but that's a beautiful thing, mate. I've seen it and fair play to me. I'm going to shake your hand for that Thank one you, because man. you've done all the work Thank for you. charity and that's what it's all about, man. I've done that twice that's now. That's what it's so, all about. So I've done two releases mm-hmm. for him. So the first one I've done was uh, Raise the Sunshine, which gives the kids the opportunity to meet uh, their mm-hmm. heroes. And the second one was Dream Flight, which takes kids who are terminally ill yeah. to, on a flight to California or yeah. somewhere like Colorado mm-hmm. or something and give them their last holiday. But see that, when you had when you hit your targets, you felt at your lowest point in your life, but when you're doing these good things... It's the best time ever. It's the best time ever, man. Best time ever. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Mate, I was sitting on the news and I see the koala bears in Australia, yeah, all getting burnt. Mm-hmm. Do you remember in January? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, fuck, what can I do? Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I can't do anything. I can't let these animals die, man. It yeah. really got to me. Mm-hmm. 
So I'll just put like all my earnings that day or that week. I was like, any profit I get this week, I'm giving to them koala bears. So I'm going to find a charity. <laughs> I give all my dough away that week. Yeah? It yeah. made me feel phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like when Grenfell Tower was on fire. Yeah. No one actually knows this about me, yeah? When Grenfell was burning down, it reminded me of where I'd come from, man. I know what it's like in like them communities. It's like, it, there, there's not enough help for them sort of communities. It's looked down yeah. upon and things like that. And it's the most beautiful community ever. Yeah. Everyone helps each other. Yeah. I remember that day seeing it on fire, going to my mum, fuck, what can I do here? She said, like, I don't know. I went back to my office. At the time I had a clothing brand. I must have had 500 tracksuits, t-shirts, trousers, everything. I loaded a car up and I drove straight down to Grenfell Tower and I got out of a mosque. I took my shoes off and went and greeted the guys in the mosque and said, please, can I just leave you some supplies? I know you're getting them from everywhere. Anyone from that place that needs clothes, anything, yeah? Just, just see, here you go. Mm -hmm. I'll give my whole brand away. Every single thing that I had there, I'll give away so the people that was coming out of the tower mm -hmm. could have some clothes to come out to. Yeah. And that made me feel good. Of course. Doing that. And yeah. I felt like I was giving something back. Mm -hmm. And ever since I've done that, that's all I've done. Yeah. That's all I've done. And my friend I was talking about from who told me to go on the show is now yeah, back. Yeah. And like, I'm getting my life back. Mm -hmm. And I've just got a spark in me now, man. Yeah, you can see it in your eyes. I've but got a spark, yeah. man. And like, I've, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go now. Yeah, and I, I yeah. feel like I have learned so much at a young age. Yeah. I've lost a lot of people around me, mm -hmm. um, like drastically young. Yeah, you lost two friends last year to a car crash, is that correct? I lost two last year uh, and I lost another two this year as well. Yeah. I got um, one of my cousins over in Ireland passed away. Sorry to hear that. Yes, all right, no problem, man. Uh, young, he was young, same age as me. Yeah. Had two kids and then I lost another cousin who uh, was 40 with, with mm -hmm. um, four kids. It was a big inspiration for me. He played a big part of my life. Yeah. He was... Um, he spent a lot of his life reforming prisoners mm -hmm. and giving homeless places to sleep and all that. And he died this year. And um, that was just another thing. It was another lesson for me. Yeah. Straight away, I was like, this guy, I looked up to him for years. He had mm -hmm. everything. It's the most beautiful family, the best morals. And we lost him. And I was like, you know what? Looking at it, life is so short. Yeah, but that's life, brother. The we're all going to die and that should be the only mu motivation you need in the day, during the day to get up in the morning is that I'm going to die how am I going to leave a legacy if I, I've lost countless people well, you but just said his words to me then yeah. you know what you just said to me you what? just said his last words to me mm -hmm. what you just said was his last words that's the last thing my cousin said to me before he died where he just passed away before he got into, to where he was going I met, messaged him late at night one night saying where's it all going to stop like, where, what are we chasing it's no longer about success. It's about leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. It's the last words my cousin said to me before he yeah. went. And I took that on board. Took that on board. So that's that. Like, nothing means nothing to me no more. Yeah, everything's an illusion, brother. I'm at peace with, yeah. I'm at peace with well, dying. You're, not, you're at peace with yourself. I'm at peace with myself. Yeah. I'm at peace with dying. I completely mm. understand when it's my time, it's my time. Mm -hmm. I'm, at, I'm at peace with that. Yeah. When I've travelled in the world on planes, when I get the air turbulence, everyone screams, I'll just lay there like that. <laughs> yeah? I'm at peace with it. Down the I'm just at peace with it, yeah. man. I just completely, I feel yeah. like I'm at a really peaceful mm -hmm. stage of my life. But you're utilising people's deaths as an advantage and a positive, which is a great place to be because if somebody died back in the day with me, I've lost countless people as well. But I used to use that. It's their birthday, so I would get fucked up with drinking drugs. It's Christmas. It's our first Christmas without yeah, them yeah, drinking yeah, drugs. Yeah, yeah. It's the summer holidays. They would be here. That, that song reminds me but now it's to fuel and understand we're all going to fucking die. Yeah, How yeah. do we do that? Do we sit in doom and gloom? Because people can live on a death for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So it's about <sighs> understanding it. We go, I think we should celebrate life. If somebody dies, fucking celebrate. Mate, I'm at peace with anyway. it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm at peace with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now it's like, I'm just, yeah, mate, I feel great. I feel amazing. Yeah. I feel fucking yeah. amazing. You're looking, mate, and you're, you feel sound good. bang on the path. I feel wicked. Do you know what I mean? What's I'm, your plans for the future then? <sighs> mate... I feel like every time I try and plan something, mm -hmm. it happens really quick. And then I get like a bit like, oh, fuck, what next? Mm -hmm. I want the world. Do you want everything yesterday? The day before. Yeah. We, day before. Yeah, yeah, last year. I can't year. get on with anyone, man. I can't mm -hmm. get on with anyone. I can't, I, I just, I can't do it. I need to do things myself. I can't take the process of waiting. Everything needs to be done now. 
or yesterday. And like, nah, but I've, since I've chilled out a little bit, things are starting to unravel. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a bit more love in America. I've been trying to crack the States for years. It'll it's happen. not easy. I've done a collaboration with a brand over in New York, Coogie. It's like an old Biggie Smalls brand. Mm-hmm. It was fucking, like, I was over there doing a meeting in the Empire State Building. And that's when I turned around for the one time and actually went, right, yeah, we're getting yeah, somewhere yeah. here. <laughs> so I'm a bit more calmer. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to just frattle in everyone's faces. When it comes, it comes to that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to hold on to what I've got here and just trying to make sure everyone's happy. I'm trying to make sure my staff are happy. Mm-hmm. My mum's happy. George is happy. My brother's happy. That's all I want. What about marriage? Marriage, yes, uh, definitely. It's on Kids. the cards, 100%. You need to leave I'm, it behind for someone, don't I you? Think now, I think now more than ever, mm-hmm. because like I'm building now. Yeah. I feel like everything before was building mode, and now I'm like on this freedom path yeah. where I, I'm, I'm covered. I love doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It don't even feel like it's my own business no more. Do you yeah. know that? Because I'm not, not like, I'm really not that bothered about the money part of it no more. I don't feel like it's mine no more, because I feel like I've let it go of everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm just living my fun dream doing what I'm doing and then since I've done that I'm like I'm more excited for my future do you get what I mean yeah, yeah. I'm, more, I'm more excited about mm-hmm. my future with Georgia I've just bought a, like a lovely ass man like which I couldn't have dreamed of even looking at in mm-hmm. 10 years ago and I'm, I'm, I'm building on it and it's going to be a palace and like for me that's a big achievement because from where I come from, I shared a bedroom with my brother. Yeah. I didn't have no carpet in my kitchen or a liner in my kitchen. Mm-hmm. That was a normal growing up. And I, I felt rich then. Yeah. But now I'm at that stage where I'm just wanna, I wanna help people, I wanna be a pov- positive influence, I wanna have my bit of fitness. I wanna, I wanna be able to just go away when I want yeah. and just- A bit of balance. I've got the balance now, yeah. man. And I didn't have it mm-hmm. and it was fucking dark. And yeah. that's, that's what I really, really want people to understand it. Look, the more people keep on pushing, you need to be pushing for the right thing. For anybody that's struggling with mental health, what advice would you give them? You need to wake up every day and take it as it comes. And if you feel shit and you feel like you need to stay in bed, you have to stay in bed. And if you feel like you're on the path, you've got no one, you have got someone. There's a million people. Yeah. You can go to a fucking corner shop and you can talk to the man behind the till. You can go to, there's a million numbers you could call for people. Is that the, obviously, you know, the male suicide rates through the roof. 250% since COVID. I, I lost people through it, man. Mm. And people that I wouldn't ever even imagine that they would do that to themselves. Yeah. But the thing is, is it all goes down to the day you're like, you feel shit one day. You could get, like, it, it ends up, you end up in a dark place. You don't know what you're going to do to yourself, yeah. do you? So... You just need to get up, man. You've got to do things you enjoy. Don't pressure yourself for everything. It's like, there's, a, you, there's so much pressure on this generation that you've got mm. to be doing this, this and that. Don't fucking listen to anyone. You're doing your own race. Run your own race. Do your own thing. Because mm. otherwise, all you're going to do is drive yourself insane. Yeah, definitely. Because I've done it. I've been there, mm. done it. I had it. I've not had it. I feel like I've been, I've done it all. It's so young. Yeah. It's like, I 20, feel- 28, you lucky bastard, mate. I'm 36, man. James, I feel like I'm fucking retired <laughs> now. Like, it's like, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I've done chasing all the shit now. Yeah. I feel phenomenal. I feel phenomenal. How's, um, are you still friends with anybody from Tommy? Yeah, I'm still on there. I'm yeah, still I know, on but there, you're but still good pals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I've got, I've got love for everyone, man. Mm-hmm. I've got love for everyone. I've got, um, the last like six months to a year, after as I said, my transition of becoming a different person, I feel like, yeah. and like understanding what actually success is mm-hmm. and how to deal with it, I've got so many more friends, man. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to be around people at parties and shit. Yeah. But I've got love for everyone. I, 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 even if I meet someone, I think they're a complete wanker. <laughs> yeah. I still sort of. I sort of. I sit back. Oh, that's and, not directed at me, bro. No, not you. Not you. <laughs> No, you know what I do, James, yeah? <laughs> you know, like, even now when I've got people I wouldn't have got on with on the show yeah. before and I couldn't stand being a man, mm-hmm. I sort of sit back and analyse, like, what they, why they're like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Gives you a better understanding of why people, the hatred, the anger of people are deflecting stuff on exactly. them. Exactly. It's just a reflection of them. So I'm cool with anyone, man. I've, mm-hmm. got, I've got no enemies. I've got, I've, got, I've got some good friends. I've got a lot of people that fucking don't show me support, but it don't yeah. mean nothing to me. Mm. I wouldn't used to get angry about it, but yeah. I don't know more. So yeah, the, the, the show's good. I'm, I'm going to stay on there. I'm not going to be that prick that's gone out there, yeah. gone on the show, and everyone going, oh, you should leave now. Mate, listen. Why? It had, it had a part in playing mm-hmm. what, where I am today, yeah, yeah? Definitely. I'm not on there for the money. Mm-hmm. I'm on there because my friends are on there. And my girlfriend's on there, and mm. she enjoys it. So I'm going to stay on there. Does it feel good as well that you're getting 
more love from people now there's no any hate towards yeah, you yeah man it's like I don't. why I do you think that changed I think because I showed look everybody's got that persona yes it's, let's be yeah, honest yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. pretty boys girls it's a, the reality stuff but you've got to give the, the respect to people who's willing to sacrifice and go at the forefront to put themselves yeah. at that level I think I showed it but I think I think that all changed and I started getting a lot of love around the part where um, I've done a few certain bits on the show about mental health that I didn't mm. have to do and I, and I made a few comments to Georgia in the early stages that all I want to do is make a secure future for everyone mm. and I feel like I've I'm without talking about myself like I'm fucking Billy Big Bollocks or anything, but there's a lot of kids out there like me mm-hmm. that need someone to look up to. Yeah. They don't should they shouldn't be looking up to reality stars. You shouldn't like be a kid thinking I want to be on Love Island when I'm older. Yeah. It's, come on, man, it's no life. Mm-hmm. But I've sort of showed like with hard work, dedication, you can overcome things, you can overcome demons, you can mm-hmm. be a good person, you can you can have a missus, you don't have to be a fucker to a player. Yeah, yeah. You can you can do this and this. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I brought something different to the to, yeah. to you reality. Out fucking about every week. You weren't having the big arguments, the breakups, the getting no, caught because, fucking about. No, because why was your loyalty so pure then for Georgia? Because I'm loyal, man. Why was it? Because your mum and dad's relationship was strong or did you have, um, or did you feel that presence that someone truly loved you and you didn't want to yeah, let I've it go? Yeah, I got a different kind of love of Georgia, where Georgia didn't love me for, like for what I had because I had fuck all. Yeah, and Georgia had the first big house I'd ever seen, and Georgia was like had a com- she had a convertible and I had a smart car <laughs> which was Matt Green and yeah. like, and she just wanted she just loved me for what I was mm-hmm. and she says it all the time. We joke about it. I had fuck all when I met her. Mm-hmm. And I was a Larry fucker and we just clicked. And so if, if, I, if you're going out looking for that relationship, so why are you going to jeopardise it? For what? Yeah. you got to stay true to your, your family and your friends and that. And you got to like, if you just got to, you, you should be at home with your missus. You shouldn't mm-hmm. be out there partying every weekend. Why do you want to go out partying every weekend? You've got a missus at home. Because you're not drinking or anything anymore. No, I stopped drinking three years ago properly. How's that with the mindset? great I love it mm-hmm. but I stopped drinking three years ago I've had a little bat but I have a few outbursts per year but I ended a drink for a year mm-hmm. but I just don't like the places it can take me yeah being drunk yeah. I don't I don't like it I don't like having the anxiety on a Monday Tuesday after a weekend like I've slept too much and someone's out there working hard and harder than me to take it away from me yeah I hate that feeling see I like the saying but work as if you're number one uh, believe you're number one but work as if you're number two there's always somebody mate, wanting to fucking smoke mate, me and take listen, over you I, I have inspired so many people to go out and feel like it's possible yeah mm-hmm. when it comes to this shoe industry I don't there weren't no kids like me from England making shoes yeah I'm the I'm, I'm my market. Kind of Americans, Italians. Yes, Americans, Italian. But I've give people that feeling that they feel like they can go out and they can crack it. And now them fuckers are trying to take over me. As long as they stay and, with shoes, mate, not podcast. Because the podcast <laughs> game is hard as fuck. Don't be trying that, you fuckers. <laughs> shoes are easy. Mate, the, sh- <laughs> you know what? the shoes are so easy. <laughs> so listen, the shoes are so fucking easy now to me, yeah? Like, I need a challenge. I'm going to start a podcast. No, I'm going to start shoes. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, man. But everything's good. You look really happy, bro. I'm happy. Yeah. I, I feel amazing. Yeah. I feel amazing. I feel good. I feel like I can take on the world. I feel like I don't, I ain't got no one to answer to. I ain't got no, mm. I ain't showing off in front of anyone. I'm like, I'm just me, man. It as if you've got a lot of weight off your shoulders as well. Oh, mate, so much, man. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. See, amazing. when you came clean on the show about your mental health, were you scared to do that? Do you know what? Mad one, right? The night before, we was, we was in, we was actually went to Newcastle to film the day that I come out. No, we weren't, we weren't. We was in, um, we was in Italy, and one of my close, close friends had just become a Newcastle member on the show, and he had turned up, and I had gone out the night before, and I was on the piss badly, man. I was sinking bottles of wine, <laughs> yeah. And I'll never forget when I was filming that thing. I was like, they was like. They said to me, Can you, are you going to talk about it? And I went, oh, Sarah, Phil. And I turned out and I was proper hung over and I was like, I ain't talking about this shit. And I sat down, mate, and I sat George and I sort of got into the conversation about it. It's mm. just, and we was being filmed, obviously. I just fucking burst out crying, mate. Mm. I didn't even know what happened to me. I burst out <laughs> crying, yeah? yeah? I was looking at Georgia and I was mm. like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's because I brushed on it, yeah? And I was a bit emotional because mm. I was hung over. 
and it just all come out. It weren't planned that thing on the show. Yeah. They didn't plan to like me going chat about it. Mm-hmm. I was literally having a chat with Georgia at breakfast, and I just started talking about it. I don't know why I done it. Mm-hmm. So I just felt like I had to. Changed your life. It fucking changed me, mate. I let it all out, mate. <laughs> let it all out, yeah. No, I'll you know what fuck this. Yeah. We'll let it all out, yeah. Uh-huh. If you think I'm a pussy, I'm a pussy, mm-hmm. right? But I'm telling you, I'm not. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to talk about it. And then the next thing, we come home, we went to Newcastle, and I tried this, I've done this little campaign, like, to get people talking. So we stripped off bollock naked, mm-hmm. and Newcastle in the freezing cold in the winter. We had these signs, like, about I cry because just to let emotions yeah. out. We threw them up in the air, mate, and all fucking running. Yeah. In the sea, That's... but we'd been out all night, <laughs> so we was in bits as yeah, it was, yeah. and it livened us up. Uh-huh. And little things like that, I just felt like I was building my life back up mm-hmm. slowly, slowly. I took a big hit, and, uh, and uh, it takes me a lot of talking about it. So, thinking, I took a big hit in life, man. Mm-hmm. To, to get where I was I was fucking knocked for six man yeah. but that's where the growth is brother you should be proud of yourself and Thank I know you. your dad will be proud your missus yeah, will be proud yeah, yeah. because what you've achieved mate is phenomenal man I look from the outside and I go well, he's fucking flying it makes yeah. me proud and go Thanks, well man. if he can do it and it, it can be done but it can be it's, nothing's an easy ride you no. have got to expect the fucking turbulence the volcanoes I'll tell you what it is now like, and you know your thing your thing's huge man I've reached out to you saying how much I loved yeah, it thank you brother but anything is possible yeah. yeah but see the industry where I'm in now I ain't letting it be possible for anyone mm-hmm. so I, I, I might be inspiring you to do what you're doing yeah. no one's taking what I've got off me of course I'm fucking yeah. like mm-hmm. I, cool I'm glad I inspired you but if you want to come into this yeah. game that's sweet we're not competitors yeah. So we was you. I was once inspiration. Yeah. Now I'm your competitor, yeah. Yeah. and that's a big part of it. That's a lot. That's a lot of the but game. You need to compa- You need to be competitive. I you still need the cut for what kind of image. Because if somebody starts a podcast, they'll say, "What do I get?" I'll send them the equipment, send them that. But if they start competing with me, that'll work my game. That's what that'll I'm saying. That'll work my game. I mate, will fuck I them. I have so many messages, James, and people going, "Sorry, mate. I'm uh, oh, sorry to bother you. Yeah, I'm just wondering." Um, what what um what do you use on your iPad to draw your shoes? <laughs> so a lot of the time I text back and tell them what it is. I right, yeah, cool mate. Do you know any fact? Do you want to get some stuff made? Yeah. Do you want to give me eighty yeah, percent of the bank card? Yeah, 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 anything, yeah, yeah. anything else? Anything mm-hmm. else? It's just like all that hard work of me travelling around the world trying yeah. to find all these things in shit conditions, mm-hmm. yeah, and not getting no sleep to go and find the best of the best factories. Let me just give them away to someone. Yeah. So yeah, it's a comp- it's a competitive market, but I enjoy it now. Yeah. But I can't. But again, you you are killing it up in Glasgow. The fort, and I just seen his shoes, and I was like, my mum, I'm interviewing. She's like, oh, I love Tommy because my mum loves you and uh, Joe. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so we share with Joe. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's phenomenal, mate. And like yeah, I say, you should be proud. I but, think now, when you know you're saying about now, do I look back and reflect on it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I said no because I'm still living it. I feel like in lockdown and with all the shit I have been, I yeah. have sort of reflected on it to see how big I have become. But I've tried not. I try not to admit it because I don't want to come across as. A, yeah, of course, man. But, I'm saying? Yeah, but confidence is key as well. No, I'm confident. You know I mean? And no, listen. Yeah. I know I'm the best at what mm-hmm. I do. I know I'm the best at what I do. But I put myself down a lot in front of people because yeah. I don't want to make people feel shit yeah, about them. Inadequate. So, I feel better than them. Anyone says, yeah. "How did you get on?" No, I'm doing all right. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And a lot of the people who know me, all the reality stars, probably think I fucking ain't doing that well. Yeah, <laughs> because like, but trust me, I am. Yeah, yeah. It's mad. Yeah, it's, 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 it's mad, mate. Yeah, it, it's big. It's yeah. bigger. Than, it's 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 as big as I could nah, imagine. It's mega, but it's only down to you. Where f- and I'm excited to see your journey from where you are now to forty because I believe you're up there with Yeezys, you're up there. This is a billion dollar brand that you have created because I know you've got jumpers and hoodies and t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah What's yeah. that then? What avenue is that that you went down? That was just like... Um, but extra, different... It was just... Listen, I'm a shoe guy. Yeah. Just, the, foot, the clothing will never be like the shoes because I am so obsessed with the shoes. Mm-hmm. I draw non-stop, man. Mm-hmm. The clothes were just like, look, we're in so many stores. We're in some of our stores. We're like... Someone would sell 10 pairs a week. And we'll sell a thousand. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's the, that's the difference in sales. I'm competing with Gucci in some stores. Yeah. Like in, in the most of my stores that are high end, I'm competing with like Gucci and fucking other things. And it was just like, do you know what? Let's have a little avenue. See what we can do with this clothing stuff. We've done it and it hit off. Have you got any of your own shops yet? No, no, not at the minute. It's because thinking about it. 
Yeah, I want to do a flagship. There's a flagship to come, which will be like, it will be more event space and, mm. and I want to do some classes for the kids and things like that and yeah. get them down there, do the event stuff yeah. for them. But at the minute, it's just literally, we're going through this recession at the minute, which mm. we're about to hit with like, whether you like or not, yeah, we're, so we're going we're gonna to be here hard. Yeah, end of the year, start of the year, it's going to boom. Yeah, it's going yeah, to hit hard. It's, yeah. it's going to hit us very, very hard. So as, as a business, I think that the only thing you can do in my position is you need to cover your staff Make sure you, you've got your staff because mm -hmm. your staff have got you in good times, yeah? And they're making you have it off. Mm -hmm. So when the shit comes, you got to make sure you're there yeah. for them, yeah? I didn't furlough none of my staff, nothing mm -hmm. like that. I was there for them, yeah? yeah? All you need to do is cover how you can, like, to have your online business, take care of your staff, your mm -hmm. bills and all that, and look at anything else as a bonus. Because your online business needs to pay the bills, your staff, and just tick over so the business yeah. can keep on going. The recession that's coming scares me. Don't scare me for my business. Scares me for other people. For other people, yeah. Yeah, that is scary. But you just got to soldier on, and many obstacles are going to come in life. Do you think that will benefit you though, because your your shoes are so reasonable that people will still buy? Yeah, I feel like um, people still want to look good around the yeah. house, whether you're in isolation or not. Mm -hmm. Like sliders was a huge market all of a sudden. Everyone was buying pool sliders because they ran around the house with mm -hmm. socks. Um, but yeah, I feel like it all comes down to the way your brand is marketed and how you're dropping things and stuff like that. So mm. I ain't dropping anything that's taking a month's wages. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when everyone's on furlough, they ain't buying no four, five, six hundred quid mm -hmm. trainers. If I'm doing something at 160, 170, they could afford it. And it's making them happy, so why not? Yeah. I think that shows you the character of yourself, mate, looking after your staff and going forward for today mate listen for interviewing you mate and giving me your time it's been an absolute thank pleasure thank you very much mate. man and um, you're thank a decent you. guy mate you're, thank I can't you. wait to see what you do for the future for anybody watching would you like to finish up on anything buy my uh, fucking shoes <laughs> <laughs> alright listen yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. we're, about to, about we're, about go, we're about to go through a recession <laughs> so uh, <laughs> <laughs> no 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 thanks for watching man I appreciate it mate yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, Honestly, absolute pleasure, keep doing bro. what you're doing. Bro, likewise, and likewise, Thank I can't you. wait to see you for the future. I've got a lot more to give, so 365 yeah. more days, we'll wake <laughs> up again and we'll see you on next. Thank you.